Dr. R is a Nigerian resident doctor at a cottage hospital and the most junior member of Professor P's team. They are managing a case involving a gunshot injury sustained at a nearby nightclub. The patient is a 24-year-old man who works as a bartender at the club. He is the only son of his father who is a traditional herbal doctor with beliefs in spiritism. Given the emergency nature of the situation, Dr. R initiated emergency procedures immediately upon the patient's arrival after taking a brief history and conducting a physical examination. The patient, Kamo, was semi-conscious upon presentation and the history was provided by the owner of the nightclub. Since the patient was unable to provide consent or other relevant information, the owner offered consent on his behalf. During the emergency procedures and stabilization at the surgical ward, Professor P observed the patient twice, once in the theater and once during a consultant's ward round. On the third day following the surgery, an unfamiliar man accompanied by five women arrived at the hospital requesting access to the ward. He identified himself as Kamo's father, a chief priest of his village who claims to communicate with the spirit world frequently. He asserted that his son's failure to comply with a ritual caused the incident and that a cleansing ritual needed to be performed within three days. As anticipated, the nurse on call did not believe him or permit the performance of the rituals. Despite explaining the consequences, he was not heard. He requested to speak with the head of the team on call, who was reluctantly contacted. Upon arrival, Bruno, the first on call, not only declined the ritual, but ordered the man out of the ward, citing non-visitation hours. He further threatened to report the duty nurse and security personnel for initially allowing the man entry. After repeated unsuccessful attempts to perform the ritual, Kamo's father left the premises, conducted some incantations outside, and departed while chanting. The following morning, Kamo experienced multiple gasps after wound dressing, prompting immediate resuscitation efforts by the nurses and a junior doctor on duty. Unfortunately, Kamo passed away. The news of Kamo's death reached the head of the team, Professor P, who instructed the most junior doctor on the team to speak to the father, the chief priest about the son's death and the need to do an autopsy. A relative invited the father to the hospital without explaining the reason. At the ER entrance, a junior doctor bluntly informed him of the bad news and mentioned that an autopsy was needed. The distraught father then asked what an autopsy was. On hearing what it was, the chief priest pounced on Bruno, tore his shirt, gave him a blow on his face and shouted, killers, you wanna use my son for rituals after killing him? Unfortunately, the hospital lacks a clear policy on handling healthcare conflicts, and there is no established system for managing bad news or other sensitive ethical issues and dilemmas. The only resources available have been the police force and the courts, and the hospital consistently pays for any liabilities incurred. Dr. R sustained several cuts before the police arrived and arrested Chief. Chief is now behind bars, but the community prayed that the village court and law system would be involved instead of the police. For years, there has been a conflict between traditional customs and modern medical ethics. The ER team struggled to appreciate the chief's position, but their options were limited. The medical community need to understand the customs of the place where they practice. Please watch the video carefully and then return to this section. Take some time to analyze the case you just viewed. You may need to pause the video or take screenshots of the slides for reference. It's important to do this with a group of five to seven people. At the end of the video, there are additional references to assist you with the fundamentals of medical ethics and medical jurisprudence. To fully grasp what you need to analyze, it's essential to watch the video at least two or three times. If you prefer, you can skip this part and head directly to the reference section. 
Please download a copy of the World Medical Association WMA Medical Ethics Manual, as well as the Nigeria Code of Medical Ethics from the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, MDCN. During your exams, you may encounter case studies. Use this video to practice analysis and come prepared with questions. You can also explore additional sources. Note that the Nigeria Medical and Dental Act, the Modern Physician's Oath, and the International Code of Medical Ethics apply to Nigerian doctors. It is possible that the sequence of the video is not perfect. Comment about the quality too. Please pause the video to access the link or web page. Download the Nigeria Medical Code and the minimum training requirements below the link. These materials are essential for your undergraduate training. Don't forget to explore additional resources on current topics like AI and technology ethics. Note this, you can't escape a medical malpractice suit if you don't practice according to the code. Dear viewer, to ethically break bad news without legal issues, use the breaks and spikes protocol. Following these guidelines ensures safety when delivering difficult news, a crucial skill in today's world. Remember, breaking bad news can significantly impact careers and homes. Pause the video now, trace the link and read the articles. Share your thoughts afterwards. You have reached the end of the references. Before watching the second case, please do the following. 1. Read the International Code of Medical Ethics. 2. Review the duty of physicians. 3. Read the Modern Physician's Oath. 4. Download and read the Medical Ethics Manual, focusing on its history, basic information, principles, and cultural and religious considerations. Welcome to the second case.